Alright, welcome to some more naval action fun. And this afternoon I'm having a little look at the Bell Pool. So I did a a piece a couple of days back or a few a week back now maybe on um, undermanning ships once you get to master and commander it's something you can do uh, I'll talk about when you should and shouldn't do it a bit later and I had a response I, I did the frigate uh, undermanning the frigate and I had a response on the channel uh, from a uh, forgive my pronunciation uh, from a, a hey bow or a hey boo or a hey bayo um, as to why would you undermand the frigate when you can get the bell pool, you muppet, or words to that effect? Um, now, the simple answer is because the ports I normally frequent um, had frigates in them, not bell pools, and I didn't have enough money to buy both at the time. Um, now I do, and I found myself um, a shop what sells bell pools. And I got myself one. And I have to say, I'm very glad I did. Um, I think if I hadn't uh, listened to the comment, uh, I wouldn't have got myself a bell pool. Um, because I'm not that far off getting uh, my next rank up. But, what a lovely ship it is. Um, so the bell pool is... There she is, isn't she lovely? Um... The bell pool is... Uh, r okay, so first of all, bell pool in French. Now, I don't know if there's... Uh, I was off the day at school when they were teaching French. And I'm not 100% sure if there's a different translation, but my idiot translation of French, and, and that is exactly what it is, um, would be that bell pool would mean something along the lines of uh, beautiful chicken. Um... Uh, well, you know, we all like a bit of chicken. Um, and the old, you know, what is she like? Well, she's a bit like chicken. Uh, I'm not sure this applies. Uh, the Bell Pool, however, um, has got a lot of history to it, as far as ships go. Um, a lot of the ships in naval action didn't do a great deal or, or weren't in commission for a long time. The Bell Pool actually has got a lot of history. So she was commissioned by the French, bless their cotton socks, um, in 1768. She, um, uh, as soon as they started um, playing with her, they noticed that she was a good mover. And I must admit, I feel that too, even though technically she's a slower turner than the frigate. I feel as though she sort of sits higher out of the water, or she certainly feels like she does could just be my imagination. Um, but the they noticed in her early sea trials that she was a good mover. And it was around then that um, various navies were trialling copper bottoms. This is where you basically nail a copper sheet to the hull of a ship. Why would you nail it, you'd imagine? Is it to stop cannonballs coming through and ripping holes? No. It's actually to stop all the seaweed and barnacles and growth and so on and so forth from sticking to the bottom of the ship. Speed was absolutely critical with these ships. It was as important as their cannon load and their um, handling. Um, it was vital that you could squeeze every last ounce of speed, be it to pursue or be it, uh, as the French would like to say, advancing in the other direction. And so the Bell Pool was one of the first ships fitted with a copper bottom. In fact, she was the first French ship fitted with a copper bottom. Um, some might say that's so that she would sit better on the bottom of the ocean when the English sank her. Um, but no, it was very much in theory to uh, help reduce the amount of crap that grows on the bottom of your boat. Um, and for five or six years after she was outfitted with her lovely shiny copper bottom, um, she basically took part in a whole bunch of uh, sort of tests and trials for, well, how's that working? And it wasn't until uh, 1776 when those dirty colonials in the US had decided they wanted their own independence. I, I, I like to think of it as a civil war between British uh, who weren't living in Britain and British who were living in Britain rather than 
some sort of, you know, the Americans beat the British type of arrangement. Um, I think it's much more palatable to imagine it as the British beat the British. Um, so, it was around... That's a blow. I've taken his rudder out, which probably means he'll now sail off into the bloody never-never. It was around 1776, and uh, the British and the French, there was a little bit of cold relations between them. See if I can cut in front of this guy. A bit of cold relations between them, and the British ordered the Bell Pool back to port and gave her a bit of a chase when she was leaving Brest, which is where she was stationed. And the French took umbrage, and actually the British later apologised for being so rude. Um, and it was just a bit of frosty relations, as it were. Now, only a couple of years later, it was the Bell Pool that was to ferry uh, the French messenger to the United States, or, or to the colonies, um, to say that the dirty French would be supporting the Americans in their battle of independence. Uh, and not just by sending them statues and um, other such paraphernalia. And she left Brest uh, with Silas Dean, I think it was, on board, uh, heading for the United States. Um, and she was actually met by a couple of big British ships, including the Courageous, who said, we need to inspect what you've got on board. And the French captain said, you're not inspecting us, mate. We're a member of the King's... Um, King's Navy, and we don't get inspected by you lot. And the British said, all right then, off you toddle. Um, however, they then spent 36 days trying to sail uh, from France to America, um, only, to, only to be held up by bad winds. So there you go, it's not just open world uh, when you're heading off to do your missions where you're going to face bad winds. Um, it's historically accurate, bad winds buggered up everybody. So after 36 days of sailing into the wind or uphill, uh, they gave that up as a bad idea. Um, and, and, and went back home and um, it was quite a bit later um, before Silas got out there. However, um, the Bell Pool was then sent out to find and engage uh, one of the British admirals, Admiral Kepper, uh, who was in a similar sized ship and they met and they had a good biffo. There was about three ships on each side in the engagement and the Bell Pool demasted the Admiral's ship. Uh, I can't pronounce its name, it's something like Arethusa. The Arethusa, which incidentally is quite a famous British name that's been used in a generation of ships since. And the Bell Pool demasted her. And uh, that allowed the Bell Pool to advance in the other direction, as the French like to call it, and get away. Now, running away from the British um, is, in fact, such a victory that this caused quite a celebration in France. Uh, they'd engaged the British. It was quite a bloody battle. It lasted a good couple of hours. Um, it began with the British firing a warning shot to the French to say, Oi! And the French responded with an air full broadside into the side of the British ship and uh, subsequently demasted her. Um, in saying that, the British lost about three or four sailors in that combat, whereas the Bell Pool had 70 injured and 30 killed, including the second in command. Um, it was such a success that in Paris it became, became quite a fashion, and you can look this up on the interwebs, which as we know is always right and tells the truth. Um, it was such a success in Paris that people actually had hairstyles to celebrate the um, the success of shooting the British maths off and running away. Um, and it was known as the Bell Pool haircut. So there you go, you can, and I've actually attached it to the thumbnail uh, of this video, so you can just see it was very fetching. Um, it wasn't very abstract, it was basically you kind of had a ship stuck to your head. Um, and, and that was referred to as the Bell Pool haircut. So, well done everybody involved in that. Um, sadly for the Bell Pool, about two years later, the two or three British ships engaged some French uh, off the French coast. And uh, at the end of the engagement, they were doing uh, what is only right and fair, and that is they were burning the French ships um, that they captured and uh, decided not to take back. And a number of sails were spotted in the distance. And the British ship, with the brilliant name of Nonsuch, uh, chased down these ships, and one of them was the Bell Pool. 
Um, and they gave the bell pool a bit of a biffing uh, to the point that there was only about 70, there was about 70 sailors of the 250 odd that he used to crew her uh, killed. So the bell pool struck her colours and as is the way with almost all French sinks, uh, ships that weren't sunk in action, uh, the bell pool was subsequently captured and then she served as part of the British Navy um, and she served for a number of years with the British Navy and uh, she was actually involved in capturing um, uh, a French ship uh, which was a, quite a new ship, uh, 20 years her junior, faster, better guns, better equipped but still she managed to, to take that scalp and she also fought in the battle of uh, Dogger Bank um, against the Dutch and she's credited with the sinking of uh, the Hollandaire, or Hollandaire, I'm not quite sure how to spell it, but the, the death of that ship, or the sinking of that ship, she sank after the engagement. Uh, the bell pool uh, carried her colours, uh, and, and um, was, was given the credit for sinking the ship. Uh, only about 18 months or so after that, uh, and rather sadly, um, she would cease active service, um, in the British Navy uh, with an action that rather cruelly is known as being made ordinary um, and uh, 10 or 12 years after serving in whatever ordinary capacity is uh, she was broken up for scrap so quite an illustrious and interesting history for the beautiful chicken uh, as she's known now all that history is very interesting but what's she like for Biffin? Well, I have to say, I find her to be far superior than the frigate. Uh, first of all, she's got a lot more armour than the frigate. Um, she still misses, if you don't aim well. She's got a lot more armour than the frigate. Um, uh, the frigate is about 2670 or some such. Um, the bell pool, this is out of the box without any extra fancy pants bit sewed onto her. Um, weighs in at um, 3,000 on each side for her armour. So that's very handy. Um, in fact, in my first mission I, I did with her, I actually came up against a frigate and just went broadside to broadside and tore the frigate to bits. In fact, I would have captured her had I not bunged so many holes in her she sank during the boarding action. Uh, but you can see here, constantly you're bunging the enemy into reload shock when you get a good run on them. Um, I'm not playing around with crew allocation at the moment, and she's loading loading with reasonable haste. Um, she turns marginally slower, maybe 5% slower than the frigate. Uh, she's about half a click faster, not quite, but almost half a click faster. Um, interesting enough, she carries more firepower. Now, she does this because she's got more guns on the gun deck. So, if you recall from my previous videos, uh, the weather deck is effectively the top where we're looking from now. You see those cannons there, just to my right. Um, and the weather deck is where you put your smaller carronades. And the gun deck is where all the holes are, the portholes where the guns stick out, the gun holes, the gunnels. Um, and she carries a couple of extra cannons on her main gun deck and that's very important because they are bigger caliber guns so that means she has a bigger payload uh, she tragically doesn't have stern chasers which is very annoying uh, because stern chasers help you tag enemies in contact uh, she's craftable at level 28. The frigate, I think, from memory, is about level 25. I'm just about to be able to craft the frigate. There's a lot of frigates out on the market, though. You don't make much money crafting frigates. Um, what else? Yeah, other than that, uh, the, she requires the same complement uh, to sail her. Uh, as I said, I am under-sailing, under-manning. Um, now, some people aren't happy with people who under-man, and I must admit, uh, I have some sympathy for that. So, fundamentally, I only underman when I'm in um, PvP, uh, PvE, sorry, AI fleets like this. Uh, where's the other one gone? Far, far away. When I'm up against AI fleets like this, or um, when I'm 
uh, fleeting with buddies where we're out there just nailing AI fleets for XP. Uh, then I'll use an undermanned ship. If we're ever in some serious PvP, uh, then I drop back to the ship that I'm fully qualified for, which at the moment is either the Surprise or the Renome. Now, I have to be honest, I love the Renome. What's going on? What's all this ding, ding, ding for? Is he on fire or something? I don't know. Oh, I'm on fire. Hello. Uh, look at that. I'm on fire. That's what that bell's for. I thought it was me dinner was ready, but no, apparently I'm on fire, although I don't see it. Oh, there we go, there's a wee whiff, that's barely a fire. That's the first time it's caught fire in a bunch of missions. Anyhow, I'm sure the chaps will deal with that. Uh, I can't see that being a problem. Uh, I've got enough people to go on survival. They don't seem to be dealing with it particularly well. Uh, other than having chaps on survival, I'm not quite sure what else I'm meant to do. So, the beautiful trick at chicken is flammable. Uh, could ruin my honey glazing. Still on fire. Uh, where's my f oh, where's the fire? There it is. Just a little bit of... Sorry, a little bit of fire. That's not let's, let's, let's go into repair and do an urgent repair and see if that helps. I've got no idea if it does. Uh, I, I just thought you needed guys in survival. Maybe if I take some guys off sailing. I've only got one guy in survival. It makes me feel as though it's not an important fire. Well, this might be a, vis a video about how the bell pool can explode. Um, so, what was I saying? Yes, undermanning. So whenever I'm in a serious bit of PvP, um, I'm a good lad. And I, uh, I, I sail my ship that I'm fully qualified for. Which in my case is a surprise or a renome. And I do that because when you're in proper PvP... You really do need to be able to turn your ship and quite often fire both broadsides. And to be honest, if you're undermanning like I am, it's a choice of either firing your guns uh, reasonably quickly or sailing reasonably well. Uh, it's difficult to do both. So if I want my guns to reload quickly, which at the moment I don't really need because this is a bit of a cakewalk, um, then what I would do is I would I would drop a few sailors off sailing and, and use that to speed up my reloading. Uh, these AIs have been very annoying today and they keep sailing away from me. Um, so if you're in PvP, uh, which side is he naffed on? Okay, I want to go to the side where he's got more armour to get more XP. Um, so if you're doing proper PvP, I've been in port battles. If you've seen my last few videos, we've been having some excellent biffs with them there pirate folks. Uh, now I'd love to be sailing in a bigger ship because it made me feel more important and not have to hide behind everybody all the time. Um, however, I'd be undermanning and I don't like undermanning. It's, it's not good. Look at that. Absolutely tears pants off them. Uh, nice steady gunship. She doesn't list lean too much. Um, you can get a whole crap load of shots off there, as you just saw. Uh, I find her a really steady gunship. Uh, so if you're in PvP, even though it's annoying for me at the moment, because I'm running around in, in a relatively baby ship, which means it's hard for me to get stuck into the action. Uh, I really miss my sea trial days of running around in the bigger ships, the Bologna's and the Trinks and the Connie's, and then eventually the Victory, although I must admit, I never really super enjoyed selling the Victory. I don't think I played it long enough to get good at it. It was such a different role. Um, what I find is it's, it's better to be in a ship you can handle um, rather than cost your team um, a half hour ship. And it might mean that maybe you don't participate in some of the key battles because it's more important to let bigger ships in. Um, or you have to play a bit of a peekaboo role, which is which is what I've been doing. I, I really don't think you should take undermanned ships. Now maybe it changes in the higher ranks, and I'll, I'll be investigating that. I'll be getting a, I think it's a Trincomalee Trincom next. Uh, I'm not that far away, uh, probably 10 or 12 missions away from being able to do that. That's very exciting. I didn't realise both had a gun to explode. Then. 
Uh, that's very exciting. And something I'm looking forward to where I can go toe to toe with the big boys. And, uh, you know, sail, sail and break their line. Anyway, the bell pool. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, it's a little bit slow, but then so are the, the square riggers. It's what you've got to get used to. Uh, I'm up against a uh, Merc and a Serb, and they're both a bit faster than me, and they've both been a pain in the ass and sailing away from me. But you'll see, even though I've been doing the vid, um, they absolutely kick the pants out of these ships. You can easily land 14 hits, and if you're landing 14 hits off your gun deck, you're doing colossal damage. Um, let's see, where's one where I got 14 in? So, 14 in there. Um... 14 shots in there, there you go, 638 damage, that's loads of damage uh, against a ship that's only got 2,500 armour, that's a quarter of their armour with one rip-snorting salvo. Uh, so, they, how much do they cost? Well, you can buy crafted ones of reasonable quality, not the super sexy ones, but reasonable quality for about 110, 115,000. That's sort of what people are selling them for which is slightly above the NPC crafting for the same sort of ship, which is fair enough too. Cover their costs, all for it. Um, support your crafters. Uh, about 115,000, costs about 25,000 then to kit her out with uh, guns. So she can wear, it's the same gun loadout as the frigate, 32 pound um, carronades on the main gun deck. That's, your, that's where you're doing the hurt. Um, if you if you're playing with longs, then it's 12 longs. Um, yeah, an awful bit to this. It's 12 longs that you're going to be doing on your uh, on your gun deck. If you're playing with carronades, uh, it's 24s uh, on the weather deck, the top deck, and off the rear. Um, or it's um, like six pound longs for your, for your PvP. So that's what I run with. I run with the um, the nine pound longs for when I'm PvPing and the carronades for when I'm doing PvEs or a bit of fleeting where really I'm looking at just maximizing damage. I don't really care about how much damage I take. Uh, I just sit off them and basically get the spank on. So she can, she can wear 32s and 24s. Um, off the gun deck, the top deck and the rear, or she can wear 12 pound longs and 6 pound longs uh, if, you're into your, if you're in PvP mode and you like to run with the longs. Don't forget you can run with the mediums too, they load quicker but they do less penetration. Uh, I like the penetration, it, it bangs into both sides of the hull, makes a big mess. And I think that should just be about cheerio for Pierre de Berry. And the beautiful chicken, I think, has stuffed him right up. Um, and we should get a decent amount of XP for this because I've done the right thing here and I've managed to work um, both, both sides over, um, which is what you want to do if you've got the luxury of it. Try and take off both sides of the armour when you're doing your missions uh, and you will be rewarded with XP and um, and monies, lots of monies, and that's what you want when you're doing your missions. Oh, uh, straight to the rudder, absolutely lovely jubbly, and she'll be sinking in, in a few moments. So there you go, that's the Bell Pool, I'd certainly recommend her, I prefer her over the frigate. Um, Having done a number of missions in both now and taken her out and a little bit of fleet biffo, um, the fact she can take 10 or 15 percent more damage than the frigate opens up your options a bit. Yeah, the fact she can deal a little bit more damage by having that extra big fat carronade on the uh, gun deck also makes life easier for you. You're doing a bit more damage, but the damage is good. Killing a dead ship. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit subscribe. Uh, I will see you on the oceans and I will catch you.